Now, I understand. Bears fans sometimes can be kind of dopey. But I can say that, generally speaking, there is almost unanimous alignment with a couple of things pertaining to this Bears organization. Number one is that Matt Nagy has to go. I think it is extremely, extremely rare to find a Bears fan that's going to defend Matt Nagy at this point. Almost everybody is pretty unanimous in their belief that he should be fired, should have already been fired, needs to be fired. There you go. And then you go up a couple of levels, and most everyone is aligned that Ted Phillips needs to go too. And they understand two plus decades at the head of football operations, and it's been a mediocre to shit show consistently. I, there's a fundamental understanding after all that time that he needs to go. Usually the only people you try to see make a spin or defense on behalf of Bean Count and Ted are really dumb Bears media members. So that's even a small subset of Bears media. So most Bears fans can align on Matt Nagy should be fired. And that Ted Phillips, at the very worst, at the very least I should say, should be reassigned in the organization, at most, should be completely fired. There has to be some type of accountability for the lack of performance. But then we kind of come in the shit sandwich in the middle. And you have a large number of Bears fans that for some particular reason defend Ryan Pace, make excuses for Ryan Pace, try to justify Ryan Pace in any way like they're the goddamn Crypt Keeper, Virginia McCaskey, and they have this massive man-woman crush on fucking Ryan Pace. And it makes no sense. Bears fans, you've got to stop defending Ryan Pace. Just stop it. You don't have any legs to stand for on. There's nothing to really support your arguments. And all you're doing is being a part of the problem of contributing to the cycle of the me mediocrity of the McCaskey way in Hallis Hall. Give it a rest. If you can't understand why Ryan Pace ultimately sucks at his job, if you can't understand why seven seasons should show you all you need to fucking know, if you can't understand after seven seasons that you don't reward this performance with potentially promoting him to president of football operations. I don't know what else to tell you other than I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about just how damn stupid that really is. And there are no counters. There is no this. There is no that. This is not even really an up for debate thing. You're just intentionally choosing to be obtuse on a subject for reasons that are unbeknownst to me, other than the fact that you just enjoy fucking mediocrity. We're in Ryan Pace's seventh season as Chicago Bears general manager. Seventh! Not his second, not his third. So we are well past that point where you can still say, hey, you got to give him some time. You know, typically for a GM, you've got to give him four to five years. We have well since passed that, assholes. We are on year seven. And at the tail end of the seventh season, you have seen plenty of his body of work. What more do you need to see? Seven seasons in, and his record as of the time of the recording of this video is 46 and 63 as a general manager. Not only a losing record, but a losing record by a good little bit. So when we talk about the mediocrity of the McCaskey way, Ryan Pace isn't even living up to that standard. And yet there are those of you that think he's done a decent job as GM and debate whether or not he should be allowed to stay in his job, potentially even get promoted. What the fuck is wrong with you? Now you look at his first three years, in the job, the Bears finished in last place all three years. In the following four seasons, he's had one season with a winning record, 
one season with 10 plus wins. That was obviously was in 2018. Two eight and eight seasons, two whole whopping playoff appearances. One of them coming on backdooring into an expanded playoff format as a seventh seed with an eight and eight damn record. One division title again, going back to 2018, and zero playoff wins. Seven seasons, and that's what you've got. Seven seasons, two playoff appearances, one division title. Zero playoff wins. It sounds like I'm counting down a crappy Chicago Christmas song. And yet you think that this guy deserves to be brought back for year number eight because he needs more time. What the fuck are you talking about? But you'll hear it. Well, his the mistake is Matt Nagy, and Matt Nagy is the problem. Who hired Nagy, assholes? Who? Ryan Pace. He created his own goddamn problem. You can't let him skate off with that because that was one of the most important decisions he could make. We can kind of excuse the John Fox crap because that was him coming in as a young GM willing to appease Phillips and McCaskey because they brought in dumb dick of Corsi to advise him his boy John Fox should be the head coach. I can forgive that. As stupid as that was, I can forgive that. But Matt Nagy was 100% his own decision. It's the decision that he made. And look at the shit show that this team and this organization is. You can't let him off the hook for that. It's horrendous. Then you get the, oh, he built up a really good roster. 46 and 63 in his seventh season as GM indicates he doesn't build good rosters, you idiots. He doesn't even have a 500 record. Not to mention the fact that you look at this year, they're 4-9 as a team, and they're up against the salary cap. How the fuck does that happen? Built such a good roster, but he pays Jimmy Graham elite money to not play. He pays Andy Dalton and Nick Foles, what, a combined like $17, $20 million to be backup quarterbacks? That's not good roster construction. That is horrendous allocation of salary cap resources. He went into the offseason with questions abound at offensive tackle and corner, released players that made the problems even worse, and then failed to address them. Like, this is criminal-level shit. And this whole notion of, well, he's this great drafter. Just because you connect on some of your picks later in drafts might point to being a good scout, but as far as a general manager, this is the asshole that panicked, traded up from 3-2 to two to take Trubisky when nobody else with a brain fucking what of. Then follow that up with drafting Adam Shaheed in round two. His results in the draft are not that great. Stop it. Kevin White was unfortunate, but it's a result business at the end of the day. That was a bust. Leonard Floyd has been better in Los Angeles than he ever was in Chicago. That's a reflection on Ryan Pace and the coaching. Everybody deserves accountability there. So your first round picks for 2015, 2016, 2017 are no longer in the fold. You then sunk... Two first-round picks from the 2019 and 2020 draft as part of the 2018 trade for Khalil Mack because you built your fucking roster wrong. Instead of trying to get a top-flight offense, you tried to go the top-flight defense route and ding-dong, dumb dicks, big surprise, it didn't fucking work out. And you've got, what, one truly great Khalil Mack season out of four? It's not exactly been a great move. Stop pretending like it is. And again, I come back to the fact, for all of you that hate Matt Nagy so goddamn much, who's the one that hired him? He built a good roster. His goddamn team is 4-9. and nine. No, he didn't build a really good roster. He built a 4-9 and nine team this year that's also up against the salary cap. Who fucking does that and then turns around and get praised by a fan base? And defended by a fan base? Swear to God, only dumbass, dumb dick Bears fans would do this shit. And I continue to have to use this as a minimum standard here. Because if you can't understand the difference, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. Let's compare Ryan Pace's first seven seasons to Jerry Angelo's. Most of you don't like Jerry Angelo, as you shouldn't. At the end of the day, he got way too long for way too little results. But Jerry Angelo, between 2001 and 2007, remember he was brought in after the 2001 draft, 
because that's just how badly, poorly run the Bears organization has been for decades. Thanks a lot for that one, Ted Phillips. Ah, we're going to get rid of Mark Hatley, but we'll still let him run the draft that year. What a fucking clown show. Jerry Angelo, his first seven season, though, as Chicago Bears general manager, they were three-time division winners, two playoff wins, one NFC championship, even though, of course, they screwed up and didn't originally get his guy in that 2004 winner's season with Nick Saban because they lowballed him because that's what the Bears do. The second choice ended up being Lovey Smith, and that certainly worked out well. Certainly was a hell of a lot better of a hire for Jerry Angelo than goddamn Matt Nagy was for Ryan Pace. So Angelo won more division titles, won more games, 60 and 52 through seven seasons. He had a winning record. Ryan Pace hasn't even finished his seventh one, and he's guaranteed himself an ass-losing record. Ryan Pace isn't even up to the standard of Jerry Angelo. This is not up for debate. This is not your opinion. It doesn't matter. The facts matter. And the facts clearly indicate when you look at the results that Ryan Pace isn't even sniffing Ayatollah Angelo's turban, let alone his jock or his ass. Angelo had three seasons with a winning record. Three seasons with 11 plus wins. Pace has one of each. And he screwed up his head coach hire. And frankly, what's impressive about Angelo and the way he built a team, he built a better, even more dominant defense. And he fucked up even worse at quarterback. See, sexy Rexy. The, the whole thing of, well, Ryan Pace has improved the football operations. What a low-ass bar. What a terrible minimum standard to have as a justification for somebody to not only not get fired, but to get promoted. This mediocre mindset must change. Stop accepting pathetic-ass mediocrity, which Ryan Pace doesn't even bring you. If your response to this is going to say, well, Ryan Pace, there is no, well, Ryan Pace, any fucking thing. You are wrong. Acknowledge it. Accept it. Demand change. Move the fuck on. Because you don't have a leg to stand on. You got ready to go into off season. What? What fucking head coach is going to want to sit there and work under Ryan Pace? I mean, seriously. What has Ryan Pace done to show you that he deserves an eighth season? He didn't even deserve a seventh one. And the fact that he got this year to show yet again that he's over his head and not equipped for the job and bad at his job makes me fucking pissed off and sick to my stomach. And that's what it should do for all Bears fans. Aren't you tired of being a joke? Aren't you tired of being mediocre? Aren't you tired of being irrelevant as a fan base in an organization? Well, if you are, then you should be demanding that Ryan Pace is fired at the same exact time as Matt Nagy. Stop saying, oh, I like him. He's young. He's nice. He's a pretty boy. Fuck that. Give me some fat walrus lead grizzled looking motherfucker that knows what the hell he's doing so this team can win football games and win a goddamn Super Bowl. That's too much to ask. So Bears fans, stop defending Ryan Pace. He doesn't even measure up to Jerry Angelo for Christ's sakes. Seven seasons. We've seen enough. What more could you possibly need to see at this point? Just stop it. And if you're thinking about continuing to reinforce your love and support for Ryan Pace, get professional help.